Okay, we're going to come back to a uh, program we've already, we've already been looking at. So this is the string string converter. And uh, so it converts a, a number to a string in a certain base. And here I'm telling it to convert it the number 9145 in decimal to base 16. And what we want to look at here is what's called the stack frame. So every time you call a method or a function in Python or any language, uh, computers create what's called a stack frame, which is an actual stack in memory, um, where what they put on the stack are the uh, memory that hold the variables that are the parameters for the method and also any local variables like digits. Uh, so we're, we're going to see with recursion what you get uh, what's happening in recursion, it remembers stuff on the stack frame, which is part of what makes recursion work. Uh, so what we're going to do is set a breakpoint here, and we're going to run this in the debugger. And so it's starting the debugger, and over here it says frames, this is the stack frame, and we're actually at the uh, top level, which is our current module, on line 8 and then this is step into, so I'm going to step into, it's going to call toString. So once we called that function toString, it's created a new stack frame, and this is the contents of the stack frame. And then we'll step over that, and now we've created the digits local variable. So here's all the parameters and local variables are on the stack frame. It shows you the current data. So it's about to convert this number. Uh, n is less than the base here. So he's going to skip this if and go to this expression after the uh, return. So we'll step in again. And uh, we're about to call toString with n divided by uh, the base. So we'll step in. And we know now we have a new frame that's on top of the old call to toString. So when you have recursion, you're going to have multiple frames of the same method because it's calling itself. But each method has different parameters. So the parameters per give you the smaller problem. So we have an a smaller problem where n has already been divided by 16. And I'm just going to keep stepping here so we can look at what all these frames look like when we get to the bottom of the recursion calls. So then we have n is 35 and uh, n is not less than base. So it's going to recurse one more time. So now n is less than base. Uh, so I'm just going to step once, and I'm at the if statement. So now we notice we have we've called two string, which called two string, which called two string, and finally it called two string. And each time it's divided in until it's gotten less than the base. So each of these frames stores uh, what's going on in each call. So when we return, these frames will still be there. So as this returns, it's going to return to this frame. And when this returns, it returns this frame and this frame. So you can see that the memory taken for each frame on the stack holds these three variables. Now the first thing you're going to notice is uh, we have some things that are on every frame. Uh, we're going to start talking about efficiency here. So this takes up memory. Every time you recurse, it takes up a memory for the stack frame. And so you'll notice digits is on every one. And so is the base. So to, if you want to get smart about programming, you ask the question, is there some way I can make digits in the base outside of the recursive call? And there are techniques to do that. We're not going to go over them in this class. Uh, but that's something that's another thing that you might uh, optimize uh, when you call methods or do recursion, is what's actually stored on the stack frames. Uh, so that's it on this. Uh, we're going to go on to a, a graphical um, how can you draw things recursively, which is kind of a fun project, and that's what your homework assignment is going to be about.